So good morning everybody and uh, welcome to the 47th meeting of the Economy Committee. As always, some members will be attending by video conference and the meeting will be broadcast live on the Assembly, we um, on the assembly website. Um, today's meeting has to finish by 12 noon, so we are postponing our briefing with the EU exit officials um, and we will get that rearranged. Just to um, move then to item number two, which is apologies. We have apologies from Christopher, um, who is unwell, and we send her, her, his, our best wishes for him to get well soon. Um, moving on then to item number three, which is our draft minutes. There's a copy of the draft minutes of the meeting held on the 20th of January at page six of your pack. So if members are content that those are an accurate reflection of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, moving on then to item number four, which is chair's business at page three of the table papers. Um, so members will have received advice which was issued to all members on Monday in relation to attending meetings remotely and providing options where there are technical difficulties around internet connections and um, getting into Starleaf and things like that. So um, what we have been asked to, com to consider holding fully virtual meetings um, with time limits robustly enforced for each agenda item. Um, <laughs> um, so... If members just maybe want to consider that or have any points to make around it, um, we will do our best to facilitate um, virtual meetings as much as possible. My own broadband connection is so awful that um, I tend to need to be in Parliament buildings, but we can look at that. Yeah, Chair, we, we, can, we can be as virtual as members want to be at the minute. We're in a, a really good position where we, we've been reasonably successful with the majority of members being virtual. There, there's only a couple of us in the room. So if, if we can kind of maintain that and, and pursue that, that, that would be really, really helpful. You happy enough for that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, so moving on then to 4.2 at page four of table papers, um, there is <laughs> The, so a roundup of the meeting that we did last Thursday informally with Drumlin Wind Energy and Nice Community Energy. Their position paper is in the, the document. Um, it was a very useful meeting um, with some really good in, ideas and recommendations um, that you can see in the, the report there as well in the attached paper. Um, there are some specific actions for the department and other departments as well as suggestions for things that need to be included in the forthcoming energy strategy. Um, there are some ideas in the document around democratisation of energy, which we discussed at our meeting with them, around the infrastructure for greater level of community energy generation and ownership. Um, there was some discussion around the role that councils can play by transferring public land for use by community energy generators. Um, as well as development of renewable energy options in public buildings like PV panels and thermal pumps and councils using community energy generation of renewable energy to offset carbon taxes. There was a good discussion as well around social enterprises and cooperatives and how they can engage in energy production and how systems and funding might be um, set up to support community energy generation. Um, so. There, if there was a few members at that meeting, um, if anybody wants to reflect on it, um, I think that from from my own perspective, there are, are some some points that were raised by the the guys at the meeting in relation to their um, their participation in the department's working groups. That I, that I think that we could pick up with the department and, and encourage them to have a a more um, formal role within some of those working groups if members were content with that. I think that they bring some really interesting stuff to the table around the community energy piece, which is really important to the, the new strategy development. So maybe anybody else that was at the meeting might have any reflections. Sinead, sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, no, I think you've very adequately reflected there, Chair. Uh, I think one of the big things that are one of the big words that came out of, of, of the presentation was prosumer. Um, so you can actually be a producer and a consumer. Uh, and, and they are not really being consulted uh, uh, and communicated on that basis. So I think it's really important that the department take that on board. Thanks, Sinead. Chair, if members are content, um, we can write to the department highlighting um, the report that we have in the pack and the other issues that were raised around the level of participation or the, or the, 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 the type of participation um, that the Drumlins and NICE can have in the department's discussions around the energy strategy. So if members are content, we'll, we'll write and highlight all that. 
Yep, content. Yep. Yep. yep, thank you. And then just at 4.3, just to remind members that um, I'll be representing the committee on an expert panel this afternoon, the OCN skill research report launch. Um, so moving on then to item number six, which is matters arising. At page 26 of our pack is a letter from the Minister regarding the awarding of vocational qualifications and essential skills for the remainder of this academic year and an associated um, press release. This is obviously an issue that we have raised a number of times through committee. So this is to note unless members have any um, comments or suggestions. Great. Thank you. Okay. 6.2 then, um, page 33 of the pack, there's a letter from the Minister on the ring fencing of COVID support funds. Um, a ring fence budget allocation can't be used for any purpose other than what it was initially granted for. Um, ring fence allocations are set out in the Department's budget settlement letter from the Department of Finance at the beginning of each financial year. Um, to mitigate against the impact of string, strict ring fencing, bids for economic response initiatives were grouped into themes and bids submitted at theme level to allow for some flexibility across common initiatives addressing similar areas of economic recovery. However, the majority of DFE COVID allocations are ring fenced at an individual scheme level. So this one is to note because there's a response from yeah. the finance minister um, later on. So we'll just move on then. <clears throat> To 6.3, there's a written statement from the Finance Minister on January monitoring. Um, the Minister has met all departmental bids, um, but 346.4 million resource, 28.3 million capital Dell, and 55.7 million um, of FTC remains unallocated. The Minister has requested increased flexibility to carry forward COVID funding, funding from Treasury and is awaiting the response. So again, um, members will be familiar with this, so it's to note unless there's any particular comments. Great. Okay, so moving on then to page 57, there's a response from the Minister on Climate Action. Um, members had agreed for correspondence from the ERA Committee regarding Youth Climate Action NI this month. So the Minister has agreed to set up a meeting between Youth Climate Action and officials from Energy Branch. Um, so if members are content that we will forward this response on to the ERA Committee. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, page 58 then, there's a clerk's memo from the Error Committee regarding the scheduling of a meeting with TSS and HMRC on EU exit. Um, and at page 56 to, 15, uh, to 69, with copies of letters um, from the Error Committee to Minister Go, Minister Naughton, HMRC and Trader Support Services. So the clerks um, have already corresponded. Yeah, Chair, we, we, we've highlighted... Um, that this is obviously an interest of this committee, and I'm, I'm in correspondence with the Eric Clark. The idea being that any briefings they get will obviously be hand sorted, but that we might seek to have input um, from this and other committees as well when those briefings take place. So we're working on how how, how to do that in the easiest way possible, um, and we'll come back on that. Okay, thanks, Peter. So moving on then to page 70, there's a clerk's memo from the uh, committee for Finance and page 72, um, a letter from the Finance Committee Chairperson. Um, all statutory committees are requested to review the impact of the draft budget in respect of their departments. Formal written responses are sought before 12 noon on the 12th of February. Um, the budget briefing is being sought from the department, um, so Peter will follow up on, on that. Okay, so moving on then to page 75, there's a letter from Invest NI regarding Velocity Worldwide. Um, the committee had held an informal meeting with Velocity Worldwide back in November and referred the matter to Invest NI. It has outlined the digital selling grant availability and will now schedule a meeting with Velocity to hear about the products and solutions that they offer. So um, it's to note unless members have any comments. Great. Page 76 then, there's an email from the President of Ulster University Students Union. The committee had asked um, our, our various stakeholders across the students um, representative organisations and universities for responses in relation to challenges facing them um, in respect of COVID. The committee last week wrote to the Executive and to Treasury Ministers regarding the setting up of an urgent funding scheme to support students. <laughs> Um, and the, the response from UUSU highlights students do not have the same access to facilities, IT labs, studio and clinical labs, sports facilities and all the normal things that they would have during the course of an academic year. And of course the issue around landlords of private rented accommodation not being able to return rents to students where properties are unoccupied. 
This is an issue that obviously we have raised on a number of occasions. Um, the Minister answered a number of questions in relation to it um, at question time earlier in the week. I think it's something that she has now on her agenda and I think it's really important that the committee continues to highlight the issues and to, um, to keep them up there in, in a high profile. I think it's important that action is taken to support students and that funding is made available to do that and that the Minister makes bids to the Executive that it is going to get some much needed financial support to, to students and, and young people. So are members any comments or suggestions they want to make in respect of that? Sure. Go ahead, John. Sure. And then Sinead. Go ahead, John. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, it is welcome that the Minister now has recognised that there is significant pressure on our students on, on I welcome her commitment uh, during the Assembly discussions earlier in the week that there will be bids made to the Executive for significant financial investment, but it, it has to be significant and it has to be positive in how it is distributed. Um, I, I noted the Minister's comments that the plans are to use the Student Hardship Fund, and while I recognise using a, an established mechanism may be the best way forward, the experience of many students thus far with the Student Hardship Fund is that it hasn't met their needs. So there is going to have to be substantial changes to the protocols around the Student Hardship Funds to meet students' needs. I also noted the Minister's comments around uh, the Students' Loans Company, and there appears to be resistance from the Students' Loan Company around using that mechanism to compensate students for their losses. So uh, I, I hope there is progress made on that matter. But it is a case of the money has to get out the door. It has to get into the pocket of students and the hard pressed families uh, because there is some cash situations out there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Sinead? And thank, you, thank you, Chair, for that. And yes, I would agree. We welcome um, the move that has been made. Uh, and the uh, and the muting from from uh, the minister um, on Monday in relation to uh, looking at some um, focused support for students um, and financial support for students, and it, it's just really important what type of of support that is given. Uh, and I welcome that she is talking to the student loan companies, but students actually need direct. Um, access to, to, to funding and financial support. And uh, we're just really looking forward. I think um, all of the members on, on our committee are really looking forward to hearing what um, the minister is going to um, put forward for, for support for students. But she needs to do it very, very quickly and very rapidly. There is a lot of desperation right there among um, our student community uh, and their families as well. Um, there's a lot of hardship and it's it's pretty heartbreaking when you hear some of the stories uh, and students are not just 18 to 24 year old students can be mature students and they've got no support whatsoever they can't claim benefits they can't uh, you know they're still paying for accommodation they're not spending and we know all of this we've rehearsed it again and again and again so I think we might be getting to uh, find a solution for them and I really welcome that uh, from the department and, and from the minister, uh, and the sooner the better. No thanks, Jeanette. Okay, so moving on then to 6.9 at page 78 of your pack, there's a summary from CBI on, on its COVID 19 emergency working group. Um, it raised issues raised um, in relation to COVID testing and vaccines for staff in relation to business rates relief and local business travel. So it's to note at this point, um, and I'm sure these will be issues that we'll return to. Members contend? Agreed. Page 80, then, there's a report from KPMG on the small-scale wind sector. The report was written on behalf of Renewable Energy NI to address questions and concerns which have been raised in relation to excessive returns to developers of small-scale wind under the, the NIRO. Um, Renewable NI had written to the Minister in October in response to the Audit Office report generating electricity from renewable energy, challenged in some of the statements. Um, the report was referenced during the informal meeting with the community energy suppliers last week. I'm sure it's something we'll return to in relation to our energy strategy um, sure, work. Yeah. We're, we're using it as part of our, um, if you like, pool of information for going forward in the energy strategy. Okay. Members content to note? Agreed. 
<coughs> Moving on then, um, page 122, there is a letter from the Presidents of Queen's Students Union, um, and again highlighting issues that will be familiar to the members in relation to student fees, housing and also mental health impacts of COVID. Um, obviously, we've just discussed how, how the, the Minister has responded to those and the actions we've already taken, and, and mental health issues do remain high up um, in terms of the, those that are raised with us and, and um, are something that we have also um, raised with the Minister. And, and just moving on to the next response, it's actually from the Minister regarding student, student mental health, welfare and wellbeing. And the Minister is outlining she's met with the Executive's mental health champion, is sharing details of what the further and higher education sectors are doing to support the welfare and mental health of students. And a further meeting has been arranged to discuss more support. The Minister welcomes the committee's call for an executive-wide um, approach to these issues. So, um, our members have members any comments or anything they make, want to make in relation to that, or are they happy to, con to note for now? Agreed. Okay, thank you. Moving on then, page 20 of table paper is the department's um, weekly sit rep, um, highlighting some of the key issues uh, for the department over the course of the week. So, are members content to note? Yeah, agreed. Um, then page 22 of table papers, there's a departmental response regarding the, the student loans um, application process um, and if members remember the passport link was created internally between student loans company and the, um, the British government's passport office. Uh, extend into UK passport holders only. The Minister's response of the 5th of January did not refer to an equality screening exercise but indicated that officials consulted with the Department's Equality Unit who advised that this arrangement has no Section 75 equality implications and is simply making the process easier where the technology allows. Um, are members content to note for now? Great, yeah. So go ahead, John. I find this response somewhat puzzling because the only way the equality unit of the department, sorry, there's a lot of feedback. Uh, okay, the, the only way the equality department of the or the equality unit of the department can come to the conclusion that there's no equality implications is by doing an equality screening exercise. If they haven't carried out an equality screening exercise. They can't stand by their statement that there's no equality implications. Now, the equality screening exercise is a desktop procedure or can be a desktop procedure. So I, I would ask again that the department, if they haven't done the equality screening exercise, they do one or they clarify how they can stand by their statement that there's no equality implications in the absence of one. Okay. Members content? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, at 6.15 then, page 40 of table papers, there's a departmental response regarding the status of self-employed um, European workers wishing to work in England after Brexit. Um, the freedom of movement between the UK and the EU ended on the 31st of December and a new points-based immigration system has been implemented. This does not include a dedicated route for self-employed workers. If an employer wishes to employ a foreign national without settled status, pre-settled status or another immigration status conferring the right to work, um, most will be required to consider the skilled worker route. The clerk has communicated with the individual and they've attempted to seek advice from the Home Office um, and this has not resolved the issue. Um, of members of contempt, we will forward this correspondence to the individual concerned and it is something we may want to um, flag to the department as well as an issue that is potentially a problem. Yeah, Chair, I think that, that was the, the feedback I'd got from the individual when I was talking to him that he had, he had tried a number of times with the Home Office but, but wasn't getting the right sort of answers or the right sort of support. So I think definitely this this is not going to be an isolated incident. Um, and this is one probably we should again raise with the department as, as being problematic. Members content? Great. Yeah. Okay, moving on then. We might have time for one more. Um, for page 42 of table papers is a response from the Minister of Finance regarding financial assistance to businesses not eligible for the LRSS, particularly sports and membership clubs. Um, the Department for Communities introduced a sports sustainability fund to provide financial assistance to recognise sports governing bodies and their affiliated clubs and entities. The sports um, sustainability fund has closed for applications on the 20th of January. 
So it's to note unless members have any additional comments to make. Agreed. Okay. Matt, will we leave it there, Peter, for... Yeah, Chair, I think probably because it's noon. If you want to go very quickly, I know Mr Dunn has an AOB he wants okay. to raise. Yeah, just... Yeah, okay, Chair? Yeah. No, it's just... Um, I've been contacted by Eddie Irvine Leisure. I passed it on to Peter. Um, they're concerned that they feel they're now excluded from the large tourism and hotel sector scheme and they haven't been able to get access to any direct funding uh, to date because of their, their rateable valuation of over 51,000. So they would like, like us to raise it with the Minister. I think we should also raise it with the Department of Communities. There is a leisure aspect to the whole thing and see if they would be considered as part of the funding package from them. Chair, I think absolutely, as Mr Dunn says, this is this is one the department needs to see because this isn't the only kind of business like this. Um, and the the large hospitality support scheme yeah. um, should really reflect, you know, um, businesses like this. I think it's it's maybe just not necessarily been considered, and there's a gap, and, and now's the time to close that while these schemes are active. So if members are content, we raise this issue and, and this type of sector, particularly with the department, that um, it would seem logical it falls into the large hospitality scheme. Yeah. Members content? And communities as well. Please. And communities as well, yeah. Um, because there may well be other monies there that can be used. Okay. Grant, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks. Um, so, Chair, I don't know. We're, we're. Sorry, who's looking at so go ahead, Stuart. Apologies, just uh, as we're coming to the end of the meeting, um, the point that, that, that Mr Dunn raises is an important one, and the same organisation has been in contact with a number of MLAs. Um, but we also received this week proposals from included about the how uh, the, the funding that remains with the department before the end of the March year could be distributed. Could we suggest that we write to the department to encourage them to take on board seriously the uh, paper which was presented to them, to them by Excluded NI? Yep, Stuart, content to do that. Um, and it will be in our table papers, which are our... Chair, what we'll do is we'll put out everything that hasn't been discussed today to get agreement via correspondence, and that'll be one of the items. But yes, content to do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so item number 10, then, date, time and place of our next meeting. So just to remind members that we have our skills um, inquiry event tomorrow and that members are asked to tune in to it from a quarter past 11. Quarter past 11, Chair, until noon. So and then our next committee meeting is next Wednesday morning in room 30 at 10 a.m. So thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good job. Thank you. It is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Committee Room 29.